I've always felt as though I've hovered around soccer since about the 2014 World Cup in um, Brazil when Germany won. I've been kind of in and out. I've been kind of in or in and out of these just like discussions. Understand? I understood who some players were. I played FIFA, but I feel like I really didn't start to really follow soccer until right before the 2018 World Cup. But by then, um, I picked the team at random. I picked Bayern Munich to follow, and now I'm one of the. Now I'm a huge Bayern Munich fan. I'm a big soccer guy. For someone that's grown up in the U.S., never truly understood soccer until Atlanta United got a team. For me, I mean, it was a complete culture shock to understand that, like, there was a whole, the whole world was in on this sport that the U.S. was really, that the U.S. really wasn't. But I realized, man, soccer is more than just an environment. It's more, it's more of an artwork of a sport. And you can, and I mean, the people that make soccer just an artwork are the elite players that, (laughs) that play within the leagues. I mean, but I'll get into it in a bit. But today is July 22nd, 2020 in this quarantine. I'm James Sims. And for this bit on the elite, I'm going to go down the players in the, the national, the international soccer players across the five top leagues in Europe that I would recommend that I would that I would say are some of the best soccer players in the world just based off of where they are. And if you understand soccer, you understand that there's no salary cap. So naturally, the five, the the top players in the world usually tend to play on the same teams because these teams are like uh, they're rich enough to actually like support their salaries and actually pay them so you'll see a lot of teams dominating in specific leagues and you, when and usually if, if one of their top players goes they'll usually fill them in they'll usually fill in that spot with another highly paid player so this is kind of the this is the beast that is international soccer that is that is fifa um, with all the tournaments they play and everything because it's tough to kind of understand it from the american point of view where you don't see a lot of sports like it i mean this is a sport where every single where every single team they play every they play every other team in the league at home and away like because they can actually fit it in their schedule once home and away they they have a perfect schedule i feel like they run everything well with their tournaments that with with the Champions League within their own domestic tournaments within their with their own within the international tournaments, and through that we're able to find the top the most elite level players, and a lot of them you'll find are on the same team because like I said there's no salary cap, but I'll get into it in a bit. So, like I'm saying, because of this, you don't see any you don't see a single one of these players playing for a club that is that is outside um, either Spain. France, England, Germany, or Italy, the five leagues. Uh, usually if a team, if, if someone's playing well on a team that isn't in those leagues, they'll eventually get recruited and they'll, they'll, they'll get poached off those teams to play on a big level team, on a big market team, on a top tier program. So um, just to get started, I'm going to start with the French league, the Ligue de Ligue 1, where I kind of compared them to uh, the ACC in my in my other talking point because they really only have one team dominating and that is PSG. So um the only players in PSG that I would consider elite especially at this point um of course are Neymar the 28-year-old forward coming out of Brazil who is now he's currently the Brazil's current leading scorer and he was the most expensive player signed when uh, PSG initially signed him, but now the 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 new face of that team is now Kylian Mbappe, who at twenty one, who has because become one of the league's most prolific young scorers. He already he helped this team win the World Cup, uh, and he's already the face of the FIFA twenty cover. He, I just got the news like a couple minutes ago, but that's how dominant, that's how good Kylian Mbappe is. And just looking at PSG this side, these are the only two players in the French league that are considered elite. And they're elite within their own right, playing for the right team. Um, now, if we go to Serie A, the Italian league that I compared to the Pac-12, because they're just really, really good teams knocking each other off. Really one premier team, and that's Juventus. And the players that I declared, um, the player, the only player that I declared, um, the players that I said were elite. First of all, 35-year-old Cristiano Ronaldo, who already is goaded for being one of the greatest soccer players to ever play. He has five Ballon d'Or. He has enough, he has as many Ballon d'Ors in his trophy case as he does fingers on his left hand, which is in itself, which should be, he should be recognized as elite for that. And then also I have 20-year-old um, defender Matisse Delict, 
who was recently poached off of Juventus from Ajax and even and now in Juventus playing Italy in the Serie A, he's already established himself as the best. was one of the best young defensive players, especially in the Italian league. So once you get to Serie A, it's really just those guys for me. And even moving on to other teams like uh, even um, even AC Milan or Inter Milan, where they have Lukaku and they have Lautaro Martino, like. Lukaku is really, he's really, 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 really good. An amazing striker for Belgium. He was an amazing striker for Man U. And he brought a lot, I mean, he was the reason a lot more people were watching Inter Milan, but I don't think he's that level yet. Additionally, they have Lautaro Martinez, who's a 22-year-old striker, who I think is really good, but I wouldn't consider him elite until he starts for another, a better club, if that makes sense, like a top-tier club. Following uh, following this, I'm going to go to the Bundesliga, which is the German league, which I compared to the Big 12, because usually every year it's a two-horse race, just like in the Big 12 is Oklahoma and Texas, and the Bundesliga, it is Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich. So starting with Borussia Dortmund, to me, Dortmund has two elite players, and they're both under the age of 21. First, you have Jaden Sancho, who is a forward out of England. He's, I mean, over the last couple of seasons, he's had double-digit goals and double-digit assists, despite being a teenager when he was doing so, uh, helping Borussia Dortmund finish like they they they'd finished pretty high in the Bundesliga both of the both of the last couple of years while he was there, and he was a big part of that. He was a big part of those about of, of that team, especially as a teenager. I have and following and alongside him, you have Erling Braut Holland, who is the newest, um, the the newest hot commodity, the newest striker from Norway. He was originally playing in the Austrian Bundesliga, and he would go on to lead the whole league in goals, like by a wide margin, and he scored a lot of Champions League goals for FC Salzburg in the group stage. He was he moved to Borussia Dortmund in the winter, and he's had an amazing second half of the season as they finished out the season. Also, um, he's helped them. I mean, he's he's ready for them to at least make a lot of deep runs in Champions League. But those are the two players that are playing in Dortmund. Those like the, the, that's the current situation of Borussia Dortmund going to Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich has first. I'll start off with their thirty-four-year-old goalkeeper Manuel Neuer, who is one of the league's best goalies, or one of the world's best goalies in the history of like the the history of history. He was the he was the German goalie when they won the World Cup in 2014. He helped Bayern Munich win the treble like two years prior in the 2012-2013 season. He's been and he's been playing in the Bundesliga for the past what at least 13, 12 years, and he hasn't conceded over one goal in any one of those seasons, or maybe one season he did. But that dominance is why he's regarded as one of the world's best goalies, and why I consider him as. A guy consider him a goat level soccer player. Um, also moving up down the field, they have Alfonso Davies in their defense, who is nineteen, who's who was already a who has made himself out to be the, the 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 new rookie of the year in the Bundesliga after Bayern Munich moved him from being a striker in the MLS. They moved him on their back line his first season starting. He ended up having a big, a much bigger impact than they thought he would, and now he looks like he might be one of the faces of this new um, up and coming team. And then moving into moving into the forwards, you have their you have Thomas Mueller, who is their center midfield, who they've had, who's been on Bayern Munich his entire career. He was he won the silver boot when he was playing in the World Cup, and he was and he set the record in the Bundesliga for assists this year. I mean that's the same guy. So, moving up, you have the Leroy Sané as one of the forwards who they most recently signed from Manchester City. And, uh, I mean, he's everything you can ask for. In the limited minutes that he's played at Man City, Kevin De Bruyne is the only player that has logged more assists in the Premier League than Leroy Sané, and he still scores a lot of goals. He's only 24 years old when we talk about how good these players are. He signed a five-year deal with Bayern. I think he's going to hit his, not his, but like, he's going to be a very good player at Bayern for a long time. And then, of course, to lead that off, they have the best striker in the world, in my opinion, Robert Lewandowski, who's from who's Polish, and in the last couple of seasons, he's helped Bayern Munich secure. They've 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 dominated the Bundesliga as long as he's been the the, the lead striker. But the real question is, has what is is he going to help them win the Premier League and very well, or another Premier League, the Champions League? And this this year looks like Bayern Munich could very well win the 
Champions League with Robert Lewandowski as their most dominant, as their most intimidating attacking player. So that's the Bundesliga. Now, moving to the Premier League, because you see um, a lot more teams, starting with, I mean, like Arsenal doesn't have any crazy good players now, but they're, us- they're usually a historic club that tends to bring in a lot of really, really good players. Now, tran- now trans- um, transitioning into the Manchester teams, first starting with Man City after they let go of Leroy Sané, they still have Sergio Aguero at striker, who's been the liver who's been the Premier League's most all around striker since he's been there, except for like Leroy or, or Luis Suarez for a little bit. Um, also, they have Kevin De Bruyne, who currently plays as the midfielder for Bel- or for Belgium and for Manchester City as well. He's since he's been there, he's been kind of dominating the the assist game. I mean, he's helping he's helping them score a lot a lot more goals than they would have if he wasn't there. His presence definitely makes Man City a lot a lot better of a team. Um and then but yeah, this is the team that's been really competing and now they left uh they let Leroy Sané go. They're still an amazing side, but to me it's just Kevin De Bruyne and Sergio Aguero that that are the elite players right now. I think Raheem Sterling is definitely chasing, but Raheem Sterling after this season maybe, but still not really for me. Moving on to the other side of Manchester, for Manchester, Manchester United holds the best goalie, I would argue, in the Premier League. I think David De Gea, with what he's done since he started at Manchester City, he has a legitimate argument for, for by far the most dominant goalie in that era. And even though Manchester City hasn't been able, their roster hasn't been that to the level of a Liverpool or a Man City, David De Gea has been doing his job. And if you include Paul Pogba, who's also, who also plays on Man U and played for France, or and still plays for France. He's the center midfield. He's won a World Cup. Um, he's helped Juventus win the Serie A championships along the way. Um, he hasn't won the Premier League yet with Man U. I don't know what he's going to do. But yeah, of course, Paul Pogba is considered a Manchester. He's, I, I would consider Paul Pogba for what he did in the World Cup and what he's doing with Man U right now as an elite player. Um, now moving on to the London teams. Uh, going for the Hotspur. I think Harry Kane is the only player on Tottenham that I would really consider like incredibly elite. Uh, I mean, Hungman's son, really good. Christian Eriksen left, but this is the side that's really kind of fallen off since they since their uh, since their run all the way to the Champions League finals just to lose. Uh, and then finally after after them, I think Chelsea has one elite player, and I think it's N'Golo Kante. I I think he's the only player. Like, yes, Ed. I mean, or once Eden Hazard left, I think he left N'Golo Kante to really kind of. He was the he's the only soul, or at least the only soul, like starter from, uh, the year they won the Premier League. But N'Golo Kante to me is that guy. And now they added Timo Werner, who could be to who could be incredibly amazing. To me, I have to see Timo Werner dominate a season at Chelsea for me to consider him elite because he was he was doing so at um Leipzig, but I got to see him do it for for Chelsea. And uh, last but not least, I'm going to move on to the teams that are playing in La Liga, which I compare to the SEC because they're incredibly top-heavy. The rest is pretty good. They don't, they don't really compete, but it's really just the teams at the top that everyone cares about. And I don't know if I said for Premier League earlier, but I compared the Premier League to the Big Ten because I think they're the deepest, they're the deepest um, league top to bottom but really, it's just a one. It's really one team that's really trying to compete at the end. It's really one or two teams really competing. But you never know who it is. It could be any given team at any random year, which is kind of just like the Big Ten. So yes, following that, like I said, I'm going into the into La Liga, which is the SEC. Starting with Adlet, Ad, starting with Atletico, they have probably the best all around. They probably have the they, they probably have the best all around pound for pound goalie in soccer in Jan Oblak, who plays for Atletico Madrid who's also the Slovenian goalie. And, well, I mean, yeah, since he's been in, he's, 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 there's been an argument between him, Ter Stegen, and Thibaut Courtois. I think out of all three of those, Jan Oblak is the best goalie in all of Spain, and the other two play for Real Madrid and FC Barcelona. So that enough should say in itself. Go, and then I think Jao Felix could most definitely get the bat to see him dominate in La Liga before I consider Jao Felix an elite forward um, that's the only player on Atletico, on Atletico that I'd, I'd really consider at this point. And then moving on to the runner-ups, moving on, to, moving on to the uh, the runner-ups up in La Liga, FC Barcelona, starting in the goal. They start off with Mark Andre Ter Stegen in goal. 
who I think is one of the, I think I, I, I'd argue he's one of the best um, goalies in soccer. Uh, some would argue that he is the best, which is what keeps him in this argument. Starting from the back, um, they have Frankie de Jong, the now, who's the, the 23-year-old Frankie de Jong in the midfield from the Netherlands, who has been there to kind of replace Andres Iniesta, who's, who's been kind of doing his own thing. They have Antoine Griezmann as one of the forwards that they recently signed from Atletico Madrid, who also won the World Cup with France. They have um, Lionel Messi as another as the other forward who you know has just scored a seven hundredth career goal at they're only thirty three years old, and Luis Suarez as striker who at thirty three years old who's playing for Uruguay too. He was a part of one of the most dangerous FC Barcelona fronts, and he hasn't left since. Uh, yeah, I mean just following that. Going on to finishing out with the players that play at Real Madrid, starting with Thibaut Courtois and goalie, who's six foot six and helped Belgium finish as the third place team in the World Cup this most recent year. Uh, they have to- they have Sergio Ramos on the defense, who like who who basically like, since they've been there has dominated and has been the best defensive player in La Liga ever since Real Madrid really got really like since Real Madrid was really dominating, which is the most of the time he's been in Spain. He's one of the few players that can say he's, he's won the Champions League four times for Real Madrid and he won the Champions League in Spain as arguably the best player in a side that only allowed two goals the entire World Cup while he was playing. They also have, uh, and moving forward, they have Luka Modric and Toni Kroos in their midfield, who I would argue is the best combination of midfielders in all of soccer with Luka Modric winning a Ballon d'Or and Toni Kroos having all the Real having the um, Champions League's wins he has with Real Madrid and along with the one that he has in Bayern Munich. He's a German hero, basically. And moving forward, they still have, and now Real Madrid has uh, Eden Hazard. To me, Eden Hazard is the only um, elite player in their attack as they're really trying to rebuild it from the prior years of Karim Benzema, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale, Gareth Bale is still there, but they're trying to get him out. Now they're trying to get Eden Hazard in there. I have no idea if they're going to sign... Kylian Mbappe, but they recently they just won La Liga because they were the deepest team all the way through. Sergio Ramos did his part of defense. Thibaut Courtois had an amazing year. Tony Cruz and Luka Modric held it down. But those are the elite players that I would that I would consider. And then there's one team that I left out because I completely just overlooked the city. Um, if we're looking at Liverpool, I still think that Virgil Van Dijk is an, is a is an incredibly dominant defensive player. Uh, and Liverpool just Liverpool just won the Premier League, so I feel bad. I totally just forgot about Liverpool right there. Um, additionally, they have Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah on the forwards that combine to help make Liverpool one of the most dominant and most feared attacks in the in the Premier League. And I think with that, I might have hit and touched on every single player that I meant to mention in this piece. And I can really just, and then after that, I'll take it by player just to show how, just, just I'll mention them once again to show how they stack up within their own position. So first, starting in the goal, starting in goalkeeper, the oldest goalie I have listed is Manuel Neuer, and he's goaded. He's the only goaded goalkeeper that has played this far, like at, at this point in his career. Uh, following him, you have goalies like David De Gea, Andre, Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, Thibaut Courtois, and Jan Oblak. And those and those those are the other players who are currently in their primes, uh, trying to, no, just trying to be the best goalie in the world. Um, I don't watch soccer enough to know enough to, to know enough about like the elite young goalies. But these are the goalies that I know, and these are the goalies that are most definitely on everyone's radar that everyone is most definitely aware of. Uh, Jan Oblak, the youngest one, being twenty seven. I imagine there's a lot of I imagine there's other elite young goalies, but these are the ones that I'm I know for a fact I'm aware of. Now moving up to the defense, the elite defensive players. You have thirty four year old thirty four year old Sergio Ramos, who has nothing else to prove and is already goaded in his own country. You have twenty nine year old Virgil Van Dijk, who now has a Champions League win and a Premier League title in a two year span. Um, so I mean, he's already at the peak of his prime doing his thing. And then you have the three young defenders who are incredibly. You have Trent Ar- Trent Alexander Arnold for Liverpool for England. Uh, Matisse De Ligt, who plays for Juventus in Netherlands, and you have Alfonso Davies, the Canadian uh, Bundesliga Rookie of the Year, playing at only 19 years old. Now, moving to the midfielders, uh, starting with the cream of the crop, of course, you start with Luka Modric, uh, Luka Modric being the oldest one out of the bunch for Real Madrid in Croatia. 
Then you have Tomas Müller, Tony Cruz, who are still elite level players that are just still playing. And of course, Kevin De Bruyne at Manchester City, Paul Pogba at Manchester United at 27. You have 23 year old Frankie De Jong, who's probably the only young elite midfielder, but he's still being recognized for how good he is. Now, going to the forwards, starting from oldest to youngest, you can start off with the goaded Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo playing for Juventus in Portugal and Lionel Messi playing for FC Barcelona and Argentina. Then you have the players that are still in their primes trying to compete that are past that young elite days that are just competing at the highest level. You have Eden Hazard. You have 29-year-old Eden Hazard playing for Real Madrid in Belgium. You have 29-year-old Antoine Griezmann playing for FC Barcelona and for France. You have name. We have 28-year-old Neymar who's playing for PSG and Brazil. Sadio Mane is a 28-year-old wing playing for Liverpool, and he's also from Senegal. Uh, Mohamed Salah is also a 28-year-old forward forward playing for Liverpool, but he's from Egypt. And then out of the young elite, you have Leroy Sané, who's about entering that level. He's 24, playing for Bayern Munich and for Germany. You have Kylian Mbappe, who I would argue is playing better than almost all of them at 21 years old, but he's an incredible young elite playing for PSG, and he helped win the World Cup for France. And then you have Jadon Sancho, who's playing as the four for Borussia Dortmund from England. So, I mean, that's how... And to me, those are the elite forwards that play in the league. And to me, finally finishing out on the striker position. To me, there's five elite strikers in all of soccer. I start off with Luis Suarez, Sergio Aguero, and Robert Lewandowski because they're all in their 30s they're both they're all like in their prime like towards the not the end of it but they're all like in their 30s in the same stage of their career following them you have 26 year old harry kane who still has a lot of his career ahead of him i'm not sure if he's gonna leave tottenham soon i think he probably should but i don't know if he will and then you have the and then you have the young elite you have erling brow holland who is now like the bundesliga's brightest shining star especially a striker seems as though he might take he's gonna he's gonna take the title for a best striker and the Bundesliga from Levy pretty soon, but for now, that title still belongs to Levy. And that's how the, that's, that for me is how I believe the elite players, the elite soccer players are distributed. And I, and I, and it's no coincidence that they're distributed among, they're, 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 all the best soccer players in the world are distributed among these five leagues because these five leagues are probably, they're the most developed. Um, they are the most, val- they're the most valuable clubs, the clubs that can actually afford to pay these players, that can keep these rosters together, that have all of the means necessary for providing whatever is necessary to make sure that the, that the best soccer players play every single year. And with that said, I really appreciate you for listening to all 22, 23 minutes of this piece. I truly do think that these are the best soccer players that the world has to offer. Um, I don't know that much about soccer yet. Well, I I, I think I don't um, with how much soccer that I've been able to watch. But I feel as though as a sports fan, I can truly enjoy soccer for what it is as a team sport. And people are like, oh, they don't score as much. It's like, that, that's what makes it fun. Like, they, there are games where you could end up not scoring. Like, if it's a good game. Like, they can still be good games like that. So, I mean, they're... I, I mean, I have a newfound appreciation for soccer, especially as an art form, as a sport. And these are the players that really push soccer forward. Um, of course, at different stages of their careers, playing in different countries. But somehow, they all tend to meet up in the Champions League every year and play one another. And with that said, I mean, I've said my piece. These are my elite soccer players. And as time goes on, I'll probably get better. But for now, yeah, I've said my piece. Thanks for hearing me out. Peace out. I wish all is well with everybody and everything.